something a little different today um, since I know there was not time to edit or do a video. It's like, well, might as well just go live and work on ears. So I'm finishing up stuffing churros, little churro tubes. That takes a while, but then I was gonna um, paint the cakes, my new cake ears. So feel free if you want to ask any questions about anything ear related, ear shop Etsiness. Otherwise, I thought this could just be a fun little kind of casual, you know, product, productive stream, little work with me. Um, and also so you can see what making ears is like in real time. Because I've done a number of videos, you know, showing steps of the ear making process. Hello. Um, but those are all at like a warp speed time lapse. So you don't really get a sense of exactly how long it takes to do things. Um, which like when you actually like play the video in like real time speed, it does take quite a long time to do all these steps. So I thought this could just be another interesting little behind the scenes, work it out live. I miscounted my pipe cleaners earlier, so I had to make some more. But this is the kind of thing that I'll do hundreds of times. Twist pipe cleaners, shove them into a tube, and then all these tubes get glued together into little churros. I oftentimes like to start making churro ears first. Oh, hi Cheryl. Um, I don't know what it is about like starting with churro ears. They do take a very long time to make, but I, for some reason, I always like, like to make them first. But it's gonna be too much and I want, you know, there to be enough of my other, you hit that amount. So thank you to <laughs> anybody who purchased from this current shop opening or any of my previous shop openings. It's definitely what has helped support me get through grad school. And it's, it's also craft medium for me in a way. Cause I get, I think I, oh no, is our Wi-Fi dead? Let's see if the Wi-Fi is gone. Otherwise that's definitely not good. Let me do a test on my phone here. Will it bring up? Am I back? I can see myself moving on my end. Okay, it's back. Apologies on that. I was afraid that was gonna happen um, because our Wi-Fi is so bad. Um, like there have been times when I record a video and I use a screen mirroring thing from my phone to my um, computer that uses the Wi-Fi and I'll get like 30 seconds in and then our Wi-Fi cuts out and it turns off. So if the stream is wonky, again, apologies on that. It's, it's the bad Wi-Fi that we have here, but fingers crossed, no more issues there. Otherwise we're almost done stuffing these churros. I still have quite a lot of headbands that I have to cover. I started with all of like the colored headbands, which I normally start with. Um, and then I have like a million headbands to cover in brown fabric. So many of my ears use um, the Mickey brown fabric. And there's just like so many all at once that I'm putting that off a little bit because it's a little bit more fun to do this kind of stuff. And then also after this last one, we can get on to making some cakes. Well, not really making the cakes, just baking them, giving them their flavor. 
So let me see if I can pick these all up. I got my mic cord tangled in. This is seven pairs of churro ears, five pairs of regular churros, and then two lightsaber churros. So that's what those look like. Maybe tonight I'll assemble them. I should do headbands though, because you can't do anything else until you've done the headband. But we'll see how I feel. Got my trusty carts. Okay. It's cake time. Assemble my paints. Um, will I ever make something else other than ears, or is that where my interests lie? I I really love ears, and especially the kind of like the little niche that I have in terms of like the sweet treats. Um, I get, it's just something that I kind of combines all of my craft interests. I grew up and I would like be in Michaels all the time. Like I've done almost every type of like crafting genre that there is. And I just love like what, you know, all the different things that kind of go into making ears. I do worry sometimes about like, you know, running out of ideas. Like, oh, it's been so long since I've been able to think of a new idea. But then I'm like, oh, cakes. Also, I'm almost done with grad school and I'm hoping to get hired for a real job. If anybody is looking for any geologists <laughs> out there. Um, so I probably won't be making ears for forever. But I find myself, even when like I finished all of my orders for my shop, I'll still just like make ears for myself. <laughs> Paint brushes. So I'm gonna start off with, these are all gonna be birthday cake ears. So the cake of them is all gonna be the same flavor. And then I have an order for one Neapolitan cake and then one rainbow cake. So I wanna make sure I have the proper setup here. The only thing is I don't know, they don't all just like stand up on their own. And to dry, they're gonna have both sides painted. And I have a lot of these. I don't know if my cart will work. I'm gonna have to figure out a system to kind of assembly line these together. Oh, that's awesome that you started your own Etsy shop. Yeah, Etsy is great in most regards. Um, there's some things I'm not the biggest fan of, like their free shipping thing. Um, but I started actually on Etsy in 2009 and I had a knitting shop. Um, so I've been on Etsy for quite a long time. I've had, these comments come up very slowly for me. Let's see, Cheryl says, any hopes to go back to Disneyland in the near future? I hope that they will let um, out of state residents in soon. I am officially fully vaccinated as in, you know, post my two week two weeks after my second dose, which Universal Hollywood is now letting out-of-state people who are fully vaccinated in, but Disneyland is not. So it's kind of like, uh, I wanna be able to go, but Disneyland is not yet open to anything. Also, I mean, Disneyland is expensive, and until I get hired at a real job, I'm probably gonna hold off at anything that's like a really big expense like that, like a Disney trip. But oh, I wanna go back to Disneyland so badly. I was uh, tearing up like watching all of these like reopening vlogs as everybody is like walking down Main Street and like all the cast members are saying hello to each other. It's just like, ah, like, I mean, for me, like I would get to go to Disneyland like once per year, maybe at most. So like for me being away for a long time, it's no big deal. But the fact that like everybody was away for that long of a time and it was just like knowing that it's finally back and open. It's like, ah, it's the best. Let me try and see and scroll back to some of the comments. Okay, um, do you use sponges for the cake part of these ears? Yes, these are a specific little, you know, like a cake sponge, but a literal sponge. 
And hello also from the Netherlands. Hello. Oh, I haven't gotten to oh, vaccinations in Canada. I know that's, I know Canada has been doing overall, overall a little bit better in the pandemic than the US, but I know the vaccinations has definitely been slower. So I'm super lucky that everybody now in my immediate family is fully vaccinated and I will actually get to go home and see my mom for her birthday this summer. So that is gonna be super nice. But I also, oh, another hello from the Netherlands. <laughs> That's so cool that people are like, you know, all around the world tuning in. Thank you to anybody tuning in. Otherwise it would just be me sitting by myself, painting ears, <laughs> maybe talking or maybe not. Oh, and a hello from the UK. Well, hello. Okay, one cake painted, but the special thing with the cakes is that, you know, when you bake the cakes, there's a little bit of, you know, not burnt, but a little bit of a crust part. So we have to add that. And I want to add that while well, that's still kind of wet. Oh, uh, also hello from Germany. Wow. <laughs> that's probably a cat hair. Try and get that out of the way. Oh, what type of cake here? This is gonna be a birthday cake. Oh, and also hello from Florida. Yeah, so I figure I'm gonna start off painting all the birthday cake ears since these are all gonna be one main color. And then I just have one Neapolitan cake and then one rainbow cake. So I'll also save those for last. Little detail in. Oh, hello from Scotland. Oh, awesome. Also starting an Etsy shop. Um, what are my favorite ears that I have to make? I feel like that varies based on whatever is my most recent design. Like I get so excited um, by like coming up with a new design. And like, it's like, I, ha I have to stop everything that I'm doing right then and there and like work on that. So. That's kind of how it always goes for me. Also, I see hello from Louisiana coming up. That, yeah, that's, that, that is kind of how it works up. That there's no necessarily like, oh, this is my favorite type. Um, I just get excited by whatever is kind of like the new design and like innovating, coming up with something new. It's like, I'm always like, I have to, like I have to drop everything and like work on this and, and finish this off. I see more, another hello from Georgia. Um, so are the cake ears inspired by the 50th? Um, kind of. I'm hoping that they will like, um, you know how in the parks they'll have sometimes like the big slices of cake that you can get like special treats? Oh, we have somebody um, from here in Arizona, hello. Um, that I'm hoping that they'll have like a celebratory like cake for the 50th that I can make ears that match that, I guess. Um, I was, I was about to go a little too crazy with the cake ears. Uh, so if you can see what I just did, I added in kind of like little bake lines. Oh, hello from the Q and Hogwarts. <laughs> um, because like they've also done cakes um, for like uh, Pixar Fest. And I was like, oh, I could do that. And like, oh, they have like Christmas cakes. But I'm like, okay, let's like, let's start basic and easy. <laughs> and then we can add more, but I think it'd be fun um, um, like if you know shoe bakery, they do like the shoes that look like kind of like ice cream and cakes. You can like bake a shoe. I think it'd be kind of fun to do like a little kind of like bacon ear. You can, you know, have a special set of flavors. I think that'd be fun to do. Make sure, see if I haven't missed anything coming up. Let's see, um, so there's about how long does it take you to make one pair of ears? That's something that I, should know um, or I should have a better handle on, but I don't really know because I do everything like in batches. So like I'm gonna paint all of these cakes now. Um, and you know, I'll, I've done all of the headbands, but I never really know exactly like how long 
the process is to do just one pair of ears. I mean, if it's like a basic, like, sew a pair of ears, I can turn that out pretty quickly. But it's hard for me to even, like, say or guess a number. Most of my ears that I sell in my shop are ones that take hours to make. I probably still underprice my ears for the amount of active, like, work time that goes into them. Um, but my ears also take a long time because there's a lot of drying components oftentimes. So I had to kind of like spackle the cakes yesterday that had to dry and then this paint is gonna have to dry and then we're gonna have to do multiple dryings to get the frosting. So there's like lots of downtime also that comes in, but I should really like time myself and then see exactly how long it takes me to make a pair of ears. Let's see, also have you ever done brownie ears? Um, I haven't. There are some ears where you know, like a brownie, you want to make sure that it's recognizable, you know, in a sense, in terms of like what the treat is. And like a cookie is much easier, a cookie is much easier to be recognizable than a brownie. Um, but if it's something like, if it's like a decorated brownie, then maybe that can work. And I also generally, well, I do, well, no, okay. Aside from the Dole Whips, um, I try to keep all of the, my shape for my ears either um, circular or in terms of like a Mickey head. So the treat has to kind of like fit into that form in order to work out. Okay, that base done. Sorry, my, these questions disappear for me so quickly. What's my, what is my favorite kind of cake in real life? Uh, German chocolate cake, without a doubt. Um, since I'm gluten free now, I haven't had or found a gluten-free German chocolate cake, except one place they did gluten-free German chocolate pancakes. That was delicious. I don't know if a German chocolate cake would look as aesthetically nice in ear form, um, but you know, it'd be fun to do something like that. All right, let's see what else is coming in. Um, would you ever want to expand your YouTube channel beyond the Disney community? Um, most likely not. Um, especially with YouTube, I think it's generally important to have a niche that you're in. And of course, like you can either like change or expand or grow, but you know, Disney is a thing that I've kind of been interested in and that's kind of where the community is based. And that's like what I'm, that's what I'm happy with in doing. Oh, did there a super chat come through? Oh, I didn't even, I did not realize I had those on, but I will absolutely get to that. Um, how long do I have my shop open for orders before I close it? Um, that ranges for anywhere between five to 30 minutes. So I've had times where, you know, I will sell out of all my spots in just five minutes. And I'm like, Ooh, oh my gosh, that was fast. Um, and other times I'll be able to have it open for 30 minutes now. So the most popular designs, oftentimes churros or like whatever is the newest one will sell out within like the first minute or two, um, but then you know, there's kind of like the little straggling of orders that come in. Um, oh, order, uh, do I ship to Canada? Yes, I ship internationally everywhere now. Um, and what do I miss about Disney? Well, like, there's just such a fun magic being there that is like, it's like that indescribable, like, you know, Disney feeling, like, you know, it's, it's like why, you know, everybody who's still an adult, it just like loves the parks. It's just like such magic and fun and not necessarily an escape from reality, but just such, you know, it's, it's to me, it's so much fun. So uh, thank you for a lot. Wow, a $10 super chat. I had no idea those were on. A uh, fellow geologist here, not in the field anymore, but have been enjoying your content for about 15 months now. Thank you so much. I, yeah, I'm kind of in the very specific niche of <laughs> Disney and geology. I try. I, it's been so long since I've done um, a geology of Disney video just because they take so long to put together. Um, but since last summer, I've been wanting to do a video on the geology of, on the fake real geology of Cars Land because I was going to be in Disneyland and I was going to be able to get all my own footage and then the parks closed and yada, 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 whatnot. But hopefully, um, 
I can maybe work on that soon. Um, how do you recommend packing your ears to ship out? I have a whole video um, that shows my packing process. Um, I use kind of specific for single ears uh, literature mailers. I always like to um, pretty carefully package them with um, bubble wrap. Some shops, which I don't, you know, not that I don't agree with, but they will just use like a poly mailer. Like I like I like it in a box, bubble wrap to cushion. You know, also kind of you know protection for the elements. But yeah, I have um, a whole video on that. Okay. Do I have a dream Disney item? Hmm. I don't know. Like most of the things that I do are like pin related. And there's definitely some pins that I'd like. But then, yeah, that's something I'd have to think about. Yeah. Also, I'm like, I'm just like, this, this is a finished painted birthday cake and I'm still awkwardly holding this because I'm trying to figure out how I can set this these up to dry without maybe I can just get like little paint bottles <laughs> and just set up a line of them to dry um, favorite Disney ride at Walt Disney World definitely Splash Mountain I'm super excited to see what they're gonna do with the princess and the frog retheme because I love the log flume and it was kind of like the first ride that I fell in love with back in Disney when I was a kid. I, I don't know if it's my favorite at Disneyland just because of how the logs are. Like you just get, like I always get so wet because the water rolls over on the sides and it's a little bit shorter. And so I still love it, but I don't know if I could say it's totally my favorite at Disneyland. But then at Disneyland, it'd be hard for me to choose a favorite because I love <laughs> almost everything there. That paintbrush almost fell. Oh, it has some gluten-free recipes on YouTube. That's awesome. Oh, a Disney dream item. Oh, an unlimited annual pass. Oh, well, if, if, that, if that's a Disney dream item, then yes. Like, it's definitely like a dream to like become like a Disney annual pass holder. Um, I don't know how that's gonna look like when they finally bring that program back at Disneyland. So, you know, who, who knows when that's gonna be coming back there, but like, you know, being an annual pass holder would be so cool, but I just like wanna get back to the parks because I haven't been to Disney World in 10 years now. <laughs> the last time I went, was 2011 um, and it has been a very long time and I really want to get back but I also like I want to get back to Disneyland too but it's been much shorter time since there but I'm somebody who the parks are really like my my thing that I love and my dad also loves the parks he really wants to get back to uh, Disney World too and there's a, so many new things for us to do there scroll back um, is there any movie you wish Disney made a ride for? I would love a Wally ride in Tomorrowland. I think it would fit perfectly in with the land itself. Um, there are certain things that are in Tomorrowland that I feel like don't fit Tomorrowland as well, but I think like a Wally ride would be so cool, like floating through space. That'd be awesome. Um, let's see, which Disney park is my favorite? I would have to say Disneyland Park. Like Disneyland is something, like I understand why like there are locals who just go there their whole lives and like keep going back or like people that go there every single week. Cause you know, I've been, you know, three separate trip, trips now, you know, quite a number of days in Disneyland Park and I still haven't been able to do everything that I wanna do. Like there was just so much packed into that one park to do because I love the attractions, you know. Some people do like the shows or like the characters or, you know, food, but I love the attractions and Disneyland is just so jam packed with amazing, amazing attractions that I'd have to say that's my favorite. 
but also take that with a grain of salt because I have not been to Disney World in a decade. So there's obviously a lot that has changed there. I know people now, like Animal Kingdom has really come into its own. I went to Animal Kingdom um, before it officially opened to the public during previews in 98. Um, and uh, all I remember was it's tough to be bug traumatized me for life. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I, I think now, you know, as an adult with Pandora there, uh, Animal Kingdom could maybe come up as a better one. Um, do I like riding the roller coasters there? Yes, I love all of the Disney coasters. I'm not like a super, super thrill person, but I will ride any and every Disney coaster. Um, they're all so amazing and Oh, just like thinking about that, like, oh, I want to like be on the Incredicoaster or like, ah, it's been so long since Rock and Roller Coaster. I want to ride them. Okay, we have one. What was your very first pair of ears that I made? The very first pairs of ears that I made are um, long trashed. Um, I'm, I think actually some of the first ears that I made were the lollipop ears that I did my DIY tutorial for. The video I have on my channel um, that made me doing that tutorial, that was just the first time I was making those. I was just winging them. Um, and so I believe those were the first like actual ears I ever made. And the, the old original pairs are long trashed. But then when I started to get into fabric ears, I had just gotten some regular like Minnie Mouse Disney licensed fabric at Joann's um, and they, I, I probably wore them in a video, but you know, they did not look that good. I mean, that's the thing with ears, especially, or, I mean, like any kind of craft is that, you know, when you first do it, it's probably not going to look that good, but the more you do it and you just keep doing it, then you really hone and refine the craft. And sometimes like you'll see people like, oh, those ears look so good. Well, you know, I, I have sold now close to a thousand ears on Etsy. So I have had a, a lot of, a lot of practice um, in, you know, getting a headband just right or like sewing a circle. So it really just takes, you know, a lot of time and practice and honing of the craft. Scroll back again. Okay, yes. What are some of my favorite Disneyland vlog channels? Um, the opening vlogs that I watched, I always really enjoy Magic Journeys. I love how super high, like super high quality and like the production value of their content. Um, so I always really enjoy Magic Journeys and their videos. I do also like Mr. Cheesy Pop. I think he's he's really fun and if infectious and like his video of like everybody on Main Street, um, you know, started up. Um, I have also followed Fresh Bake, Fresh Baked for a long time just cause they're always in the parks. And I like the kind of just like the ambiance of almost being there um, with people. See. Scroll, scroll back. Um, would I prefer to get 100 free prints per year or prefer free stays at the Disney resorts or, or parks for life, but you'd have to give up all your pins? That, that's only tough in the sense that I have pins that are sentimental, but in terms of like value, like free stays at Disney resorts, like they just keep getting so, like so much more expensive. Like I might have to choose the resorts. Let's see. Yeah, sorry, I'm, it's a little bit, it's, it's much harder than I thought it would be to track these comments. I thought they would just like stay up. Um, oh yes, Cheryl also hates it. It's tough to be a bug. <laughs> N never, never, that scarred me for 40 movies for life. 
Um, is there any ride you would switch out for a different theme or a character? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what to do with these painted ones. Um, that's something where I could, you know, probably give a better answer if I thought of more. I mean, what they've basically already done and, you know, should do is like Stitch's Great Escape. Like Stitch was already a replacement um, for that and they've already gotten rid of Stitch's Great Escape. So, you know, put, maybe turn that into some Wally ride. Get, you know, Stitch is a little too overused and I think Wally is a better fit for Tomorrowland. But again, Stitch is like, he's like already gone, <laughs> basically. Um, let's see, H have I ever visited Disneyland Paris? I've never been to any of the international Disney parks, but I think like most people who really love the Disney parks and that's kind of like their thing, it's really a bucket list to be able to visit all of the international parks. So that's, you know, definitely a dream hope. And I also think like most people, like I'd have to say Tokyo is on the top of my list, like specifically Tokyo Disney Sea, just because of how absolutely unique it is. Um, but I know um, the second part, park at Paris, the Walt Disney Studios is definitely getting some upgrades and kind of newness added to it. So that would also be super awesome to visit. Just going abroad <laughs> again. Um, have you ever gotten stuck on a Disney ride? Not that I can recall, nothing more than a few seconds. No fun evacs. Um, so you see, thinking about starting a Mickey ear shop, how much do you need to start with? So definitely start small. Um, I started off just selling a single type of ears, just lollipop ears. I used to scour all of the Claire's in the Tempe Phoenix area and I used to get my headbands from there because they were plastic headbands that had teeth on them. So that was before I even like bought wholesale or anything. And so really just start small, you know, with a few designs and then it really has just like a slow accumulation. Something that I'm very excited about that I finally decided to actually invest in was a thermal label printer because otherwise all my shipping labels I would just print with my regular printer and then you have to use a paper cutter and cut them out. And that, that just takes up unnecessary time. You know, printer ink is expensive. Um, so that's kind of like slowly over time, like you level up and like upgrade materials, get new things. Um, so it's kind of like a slow process to build up your, sh your shop, but you know, just start with, start with the small things. I need this paint that is now <laughs> holding up those ears. Okay. Switch. Okay, get more of that. Um, do I have a dream dessert that I wish Disney could make so I could make ears inspired by it? Mm. I feel like that's probably something that I've thought of before. Um, but then also sometimes, you know, I have desserts that aren't necessarily like specifically Disney. I mean, that are kind of more so general desserts. Um, if anything, it's the other way around where there are some Disney desserts that like I'm trying to figure out how to make ears for and have been like thinking for years, namely macarons. Um, people have asked a number of times about like macaron ears and especially, um, the Mickey macaron that they have at Jolly Holiday at Disneyland, but I am not really like a seamstress. Uh, like I can, you know, sew just fine. I can sew my basic circles and, and lines, but really like, you know, kind of complex stuff. Like if you were to sew and get like a macaron, like the foot on it and the inside is just kind of beyond my sewing because I'm much more of like a, I like all around crafting in a different medium. And then I'm thinking of, well, is there some way to make it like either using foam or like, you know, even kind of some other like faux thing. So that's something that people have definitely asked about. 
that I have been thinking about for a long time. But it's kind of like the opposite of that, where there is something that Disney has made that I'm still trying to figure out how to make an ear that kind of like fits my style and quality. See there. Um, was Disney part of a, a big part of your childhood or more of your adulthood? Um, definitely a very big part of my childhood. I went to Disney World for the first time when I was about two, two and a half years old. And then every year after that, um, my family and I would go back. Every three years after that, my family and I would go back. So that was kind of always our big, you know, family vacation. And that's kind of like really what solidified my love of like Disney and the theme parks. However, I'll say Disneyland is very much like an adulthood love thing. I didn't go to Disneyland for the first time until um, 2017 when I was living out here in Arizona. And growing up, Disneyland really wasn't much on my radar. Um, I'd heard more of like people like, you know, who visit Disney World regularly are disappointed by Disneyland, by, you know, how tiny everything is and the castle and like, you know, the, it's just not that magical. But like, you can't really see my Disneyland um, thing in the background, but it's like, I love Disneyland is so much now like it is like so magical and Disneyland is really all kind of you know found and, and fell in love with well, more as an adult. Um, could you tell us about the nail polish you're wearing? This is a uh, lavender syrup by Hollow Taco the new um, pastel spring collection super super pretty. Um, what is my favorite savory and sweet snack in Disneyland? Um, so as of now, I don't currently have anything that could necessarily be said as my favorite because I can no longer eat either of them um, because churros, like as they say, the Disneyland churros are absolutely amazing. Um, but Disneyland does not have any gluten-free churros, so I cannot eat them there ever anymore until they get gluten-free ones, but otherwise it's like churros. I'm, I'm there for the churros, they're amazing. And then in terms of savory snacks, um, like I loved the skewers from Bengal Barbecue. The beef skewers were so tasty. They're like this perfect snack. Um, also cannot have them again because they have gluten in the sauce. So I will need to find new snacks. Aside from, I do like Dole Whip. Like I do love Dole Whip. Um, that is something I can still have. It definitely is like very sweet um, and sometimes, you know, a little bit much in terms of that. Um, so I guess I'd say Dole Whip has to be my current favorite. It's the, only, it's the only thing I can still have that I really know of. Like I know, I know people will like popcorn, but popcorn's just like you can get popcorn anywhere. Like it just doesn't feel like a special treat to me. Carefully. Oh. Okay. Let's see. Um, where do I get my braided trim from that I use on the inside of the headbands? Um, that I get on Etsy. I typically order my supplies from um, Etsy or AliExpress, Amazon if need be. Um, those are typically the places, and those are typically the places that you can like find anything that you need. I just kind of look for like, you know, what's, what's a good deal. Ooh, we say I have an idea for the macaron ears. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of, kind of like some, maybe some sort of no-so ear um, to do that. But I wish I had a Cricut where there's like a, a little gold schmear or stripe on um, the Disneyland uh, Mickey macarons. And like if I could like get some vinyl that was like in exactly like that, that would be so cool. But I do not have a Cricut. Oh, another Bug's Life is still traumatizing. <laughs> Um, when did I start my Etsy store? I started selling ears on Etsy 
in fall of 2017. And for, mm, I don't think it was a full year or, I'm like, I'm forgetting my own timeline at this point, but for a while it was just lollipop ears. Um, but then I did finally start to offer some fabric hand sewn ears and I did not own a sewing machine. So I hand sewed everything. Um, but then I got a sewing machine for my birthday and that's what really, really amped things up. So I've been selling ears on Etsy for quite a while, but it's only been, you know, like if within the last year or two that things have like, you know, really scaled up um, in terms of the kind of stuff that I can do and offer. Oh, see, Pokemon cards are really spiking in value. Do I think that will happen with Disney pins? I don't think so. Um, just based on, you know, the... Uh, the kind of type of collectible, I guess, that like trading cards are like a very specific type of collectible. I actually collected baseball cards when I was younger. I have like thousands of baseball cards back at home in Illinois. Um, and I think they just appeal to maybe a different type of, you know, collector or hype. Like you have to be definitely like into Disney. And I think people like it like, you know, I want the Ariel WDI profile because I really like Ariel as a character and maybe less as just like, this is a valuable thing. Like, and also because like Pokemon is a very sentimental thing from a lot of people's childhood, um, which, you know, definitely is the same for Disney. But I, I, I'll say this, I don't think my Disney pin collection is gonna magically become super, super valuable over time. Um, what type of sewing machine do I have? I have a brother sewing machine. Uh, it says XM2701 on it. It's just a super basic sewing machine. You definitely don't need anything at all fancy, just something that gets the job done. Um, this is just like a super basic one and it has served me well. Um, when I remember to clean out all of the fluff in the background from the fabric, so I'll get like, like, why is this like working so weird? It's because there's like a pound of fuzz <laughs> stuck in there. Oh, so we have a recommendation for a silhou silhouette cameo um, for a, like a, a die cut machine. Yeah, that's kind of like, you know, a wish investment to get some sort of die cut machine. I know there are some shops like ear shops specifically that like entirely rely on, you know, a die cut machine, like a Cricut or a Silhouette, but they also do a lot of character ears, like character face ears, which, you know, is more on the copyright infringing realm. So that's why at least like with what I do, you know, I, I, all of my ears are made in a certain way because I don't have a die cut machine and, you know, I can't use it, although I'm sure I could find something fun to do with it. Oh, we have a hello from LA. Um, we have, what is my favorite pin that I have? Um, it's a pin that I've talked about in quite a lot of my videos. It is my Mickey Mouse holding a mouse shaped geode pin because it's, it's the most geologist pin that Disney pin that exists. And it's like me in a pin and I do own it, but it's in a framed set. It's in this beautiful Ellie, like, you know, to like Ellie 75 framed set, like so nicely framed and sealed. And I, I always wanted to wear that pin when I have my PhD defense, like actually wear it. But like the thought of you know, breaking into like a limited edition, lovely frame set and taking it out is like, uh. And there was, that pin did come up on eBay like the other month and a few people alerted me to it and I was so excited. I'm like, oh, I can, I can get another one and actually wear it and not have to destroy my frame set. And in the last minutes, there were three people who outbid me in the last seconds. 
three other people that outbid me and it sold for like $140. So apparently um, there are now, you know, a number of other people who are very interested <laughs> um, in that specific pin, but you know, I'll just, I'll suck it up. I'll open up the frame set and <laughs> we'll, we'll go on with that. Um, oh, the Walmart um, Mickey Premium Bars? I have not. I generally, I also try and stay away from dairy, um, hence why Dole Whip is good for me because it's dairy free. So it has also been a very long time since I've had a Mickey Premium Bar, but you know, that's something where it's like, it's special because it's Mickey shaped more so than like what it is. I also just have um, hello from the UK. Um, do you handheld show sewing machines work well? Um, that's something that I don't really know about. I think it's best to just get like a regular, just a standard, you know, sewing machine. Um, what type of material am I using right now? This is a thick craft foam. And then um, these are a specific type of sponges. And then I initially, um, when I made my prototypes, I used E6000 to glue them on here because I could get some kind of better wiggle room and positioning, but it, all, it, it was like too wet and it almost kind of started to warp the foam and it took too long to dry. So for these, I just hot glued them on. I just, you just gotta commit to the position um, and that works really well. Um, so these are just, these are now just getting painted, but there's a lot more steps that they have to go through. Um, do I think a Mickey shaped geode can naturally occur? I have seen some um, like geodes that do look like they are vaguely Mickey head shaped before. So I have seen some that are um, kind of similar, you know, to the Mickey head shape that are natural, um, but it'd be hard, a little bit harder to get like a naturally formed, perfectly shaped Mickey head geode. Um, what's my favorite mineral? I really like, well, I'll consider them a duo. I like azurite and malachite, um, typically found with kind of copper. So you find them in Arizona, really pretty greens and blues. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, so we have some questions. Would you say that your style of ears are safe in the world of Disney copyright? Um, you always get a bit nervous that Disney is watching me. Yeah, that is, that is the question that, you know, I'll get sometimes from people who are interested in like starting their own ear shops. Like, you know, can I sell mouse ears? And Disney has like never been super clear on that. And Disney has more so taken the route of, instead of like shutting down an ear shop that kind of like clearly violates Disney copyright because they are making full, you know, Disney face characters and like using all the Disney likenesses, or, you know, maybe something that uses the actual Disneyland logo and font that Disney will just steal their design and mass market it as opposed to shutting that shop down. So that's kind of like what Disney does. But I know when the Mandalorian came out, they were shutting people down that were trying to sell, you know, on Etsy things that were like branded Baby Yoda or things like that. Um, so I generally feel like my ears are pretty safe in terms of, you know, Disney copyright because I make sure to never have the likeness of any characters. Like my ears are just inspired by food, food that can, you know, sometimes be at Disney. Um, but that's also something that I have never really known from Disney, you know, in terms of what, you know, what is the validity of selling mouse ears? But I think it's because Disney knows that there are so many small shops and the small shops can provide them with so many ideas that they're like fine with it. That as long as you make ears that don't have like a resemblance to Disney characters, don't use actual like Disney likenesses and names, that seems to be the safest way to do it. Yeah, uh-huh. Um, let's see, do we have a recommendation for packing ears? Yes. Um, 
what I have used before for any ears that are a little bit more fragile are, they're basically like scrapbook cases, um, scrapbook paper cases that they have at um, like Michael's Joann's. They're just regular plastic, um, you know, kind of thin and they fit ears perfectly. So that way you can just kind of like put that little plastic box in your suitcase. The ears don't get crushed at all. Doesn't take up too much space. Um, so that's kind of been, you know, among a lot of people, uh, kind of favored way to bring ears down to the parks. Let's see, scroll back, scroll back. Um, what is my all time favorite Disney film and or character? Um, the movies that I love the most are the ones that I really collect the pins out of. Um, so I love the movie WALL-E, mainly, you know, the first part of it. Um, also because, you know, of like the environmentalism and the incorporation of Hello Dolly. There's just like so much like that is so wonderful about it. Um, but I also love Zootopia and I love The Emperor's New Groove. So those are kind of my main jams when it comes to Disney Pixar movies. So we have, what is my favorite pair of ears in my shop? Again, that's hard to answer just because it typically will vary based on whatever is my newest design or whatever I'm most excited about. So, you know, I might end up saying cake ears for that now just because I'm excited and they're new and fun. Um, but that could definitely change, you know, in a month or so. You know, maybe like after this, I'll be like, I'm tired of being these cake ears. These, these aren't my favorite anymore. But this is, this is the first full batch of cakes, so it's still, still fun and fresh. Um, let's see, we have a question about what's my favorite Disney memory? Um, there's like quite a lot of memories, but something that like stands out to me as just like, like feeling the pure Disney magic I went to Disney World with my high school band and choir in 2008. And I re remember we had gotten a fast pass for Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin back when everything was paper fast passes. Um, but, you know, it was for a time late in the night and we could either do that or we could watch the Wishes fireworks show. So, like, you know, we have to watch Wishes. And I just remember, like, there in that moment, like, watching that fireworks show you know, it's such like an indescribable feeling, like just like that is like the true, like Disney bliss of just like, you know, the perfect fireworks. And then it's something that I have a tangible memory of too, because I have that physical paper fast pass. It's the only actual Walt Disney World fast pass I have because we would use them up. Like you, you know, you're not going to get a fast pass and not use it. So it's kind of like the, you know, a physical reminder of just like the magic and the moments. Let's see, try to find out where we left off. Um, so we have a question on the DIY lollipops video. So those, um, they get coated with, I specifically use Crayola Model Magic Gloss which is what is you know, branded and sold with that clay. Um, I've just found that that gives the best result, but then I do that um, and then I now also coat them in a layer of varnish and then they get um, resin on them. So there's now multiple steps. Back in the day, before I had you know gotten into the world of resin, they only had the Crayola model magic glaze, so they were definitely a lot more fragile. But now, now they're they're pretty darn robust and good. Um, another question about Disneyland Paris that yes, <laughs> I would I would really like to go. Um, have I always been a crafty person? Yes, I have done like every type and genre of crafting you can imagine. My biggest was knitting for years. I've I mean, I don't knit too much here in Arizona just because it's so warm. Um, but I started knitting when I was in the sixth grade. Um, and I loved that.
but like I've gone through phases of um, scrapbooking, of beading, of polymer clay, you know, of, you know, little pottery stuff, of candle making, whatnot. Um, I, like when I was in high school, I applied to Michael's multiple times as a job and because I, I lived in that store, but it was also during the recession and they never hired me, which is a bummer. Um, but I, I went through like every section of the craft store. Um, what's the design you are most proud of? Maybe the one that took the longest to perfect. Hmm. I probably would have to say in that regard, churro ears in kind of getting that right. Um, that took a while. I mean, it, it didn't actually take that that long overall, but I'm really pleased with the way that I found how to make them and how I was able to make them look. Um, and then I might also add the cake ears with that and kind of, I, I loved watching um, Ace of Cakes when I was younger. So this is kind of, you know, I get to be a little bit of a cake decorator, but I gotta, I gotta up my, my frosting skills. Um, so we have another person who's a fellow academic and sometimes you feel the need to hide Disney fandom from others in academia. Do you ever feel the same? Um, I will say no <laughs> because everybody in my department knows I'm super big into Disney. My advisors know I'm into Disney. My advisors know I make mouse ears. I do wear Disney stuff all the time. Um, so it's something that like like, because I just, like, will unabashedly love it. And also because it's something that I incorporate into my academia, in a sense, in, like, the geology of Disney, that I really like how, you know, I have most people who follow my Instagram are, like, you know, big into Disney and really like Disney. But it's also a way that I can, like, you know, throw in some fun geology stuff and kind of incorporate it, incorporate it there. So... You know, everybody in my department knows I like Disney, <laughs> and and I'm I'm cool with it. Um, let's see, a Disney film or character that is underrated. Um, I probably before would have said Emperor's New Groove, but I feel like that's kind of having a bit of a renaissance. You know, especially in terms of like places like Box Lunch, um, how they're really you know, celebrating a lot of these Disney movies um, that, you know, before didn't have much merchandise or, you know, weren't as talked about as much. Um, but now there's like, there's so much more that they're coming out with for Emperor's New Groove. But otherwise, you know, I'd still, I'd probably say that is, you know, underrated. And like, Kronk as a sidekick, Kronk is the best sidekick. <laughs> Oh, again, another question about visiting Disneyland Paris. So, must be a lot of people in Europe. Um, like, yes, if, if any any Disney park around the world <laughs> that I can get to, I would absolutely love to get to. I have been to Paris once when I was in high school. We were just in Paris, and then we were also in Normandy. Um, but because I speak Spanish, um, I double majored in Spanish in college. The whole time I was in France, I just wanted, like, I was compelled to speak Spanish because the languages are, are kind of similar, <laughs> but obviously, like, totally different. Um, so I I've toyed with the idea of, like, oh, it would be fun to, like, actually learn French. Um, so that'd be, like, a fun thing to do, like, you know, try and brush up on French, go to Disneyland Paris, and then try and not be compelled to speak Spanish there. <laughs> Um, we have a question, what, where do you get the headband teeth from? Those are from Etsy, and I also find they're now listed on AliExpress. Um, and yes, this is just regular acrylic paint for these ears. Um, we have, what was the favorite Minnie Mouse main attraction series? Uh, hands down, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. You can see it right there. That design, I love so much. I also love it because I live in, in the Southwest. 
um, and I really like the aesthetic of that. Overall, I think the design of that was a home run, hit out of the park. Um, you can't see, but my Mickey Memories, it's the one that's like the 1950s, the kind of like, you know, fun blue teal color. Um, that one was super, super pretty. Um, would you like to keep, uh, would you like to teach or keep teaching after you graduate? Um, so what I've kind of found is my um, goal, your like, you know, dream kind of career would be to teach at the community college level. Um, most people, after they do their PhD, they go on to do a postdoc, which is just doing more research. And sometimes people will spend five years doing that, you know, trying to get hired at places. And, you know, you might have to move different places every year or two. And the research is not what drives me. I love the kind of like teaching and communication part. Like if I can make you excited about the petrified tree at Disneyland, like, like that's awesome. Like I love that. So I think I, I would really love to be able to teach at community college where, you know, it's kind of like the full emphasis on the teaching. So I've put in applications to places and, you know, I've put in applications for anything that's kind of like science communication related. So that's kind of, you know, the most ideal career um, I'd picture. Let's see. Um, do I send headbands to New Zealand? Yes, I ship now everywhere around the world. I had to pause international shipping last year, especially due to the pandemic because shipping was absolutely you know crazy and backed up but now things are basically back to normal and anywhere in the world you can you can order some ears <laughs> Let's see some more comments about disneyland paris oh um talking about the photo fabric yes those that okay the question about like what I was kind of most proud of or like took a long time to figure out, new answer, the Rice Krispie ears. I'd wanted to make Rice Krispie ears for a while, but I could not figure out like how to do it. And then I discovered this photo fabric paper um, that you can like, you can print whatever you want on it. And so I, you know, purchased a uh, image of Rice Krispies. I at one point was considering, well, I could make my own Rice Krispies and do that. But, you know, I found an image that you can purchase the rights to online. And then it was like, oh my gosh, yes, this is what I've been trying to do for so long. And then the non pearl sprinkles. Yes, Rice, Rice Krispie ears was a good thing to um, come up with. Um, are you going to continue to the ear DIY series on your YouTube channel, uh, recreating ears from the parks? Uh, likely so. It kind of depends on what Disney gives me and also like what I'm inspired by. Um, like the Disney style designer ears they came out with would definitely be easy to do because it's just blue jeans, but it's not something that like inspires me. Like I don't think the design is, is that cool. Um, so it's basically like whenever Disney comes out with something that is like, ooh, that's kind of interesting. And like, I have an idea for how to like make that cool, um, you know. That's what I'll try and do. Mm -hmm. um, have ever thought of applying to be a Disney Imagineer? Um, so yes, like I know, I know they had to consult a geologist when they did Cars Land because they they have a poster that has a whole stratigraphic column and like you know fake Cars Land geology, um, like. Have I spent time scouring the Disney jobs board for anything that could apply? Yes. Um, if any Disney people are watching who want somebody who is creative and into geology, like, I, I would love that. I actually joked um, very early in my freshman year of college that I was going to become um, a Spanish-speaking geologist at Disney World. So. Um, the only thing with Imagineers is that a lot of Imagineering part is engineering, of which I don't do and I'm not into. And I'm not also like a full artisan, but if Disney wants 
a geologist specialist. Um, I, I'm here and available. <laughs> Let's see, trying to get through a few more questions. Uh, greetings from a fellow crafter. Um, so let's see, how many times have I visited Walt Disney World and uh, Disneyland? So I've been to Disneyland three times. I was supposed to go for a fourth time last summer, but, you know, alas. And then let's see, Disney World would be 95, 98, 2001, 2003, 2006, 2008, 2009, 2011. So I've been to Disney World eight times, but it has been a decade since I have been there. So I'm so lucky, you know, growing up that I had the opportunity to go to Disney World. Um, like very lucky that my dad is, was, you know, super into the Disney parks. And that's kind of like what got me into it. Um, it's just over time, Disney World has gotten so expensive. <laughs> like it's, it's not cheap and it's also like, I mean, it's different now that they don't have fast pass back, but it was like overwhelming thinking about like planning a trip and you have to book your fast passes like months out and like plan your trip down to the minute. Um, so I'm not the biggest fan of that. But let's see, do you think you would do a collab with someone drawing an ear design for you to make? Um, that'd be something, you know, fun and fine to do as long as it's something that I can turn into an ear. You know, again, I'm running out of places to put these. So let's see, oh, of course it falls. I've painted one, two, three, four, five, six. So for the birthday cake ears, I still have to paint four more. These are gonna be two pairs of ears. Um, but also I've definitely been, I've, I've been on here for over an hour. Um, I mean, obviously I'm just gonna, I still have to keep doing ears, so. I can still keep doing the live stream <laughs> for as long as people are, you know, listening or, or care. Um, again, my favorite attraction at Disney World and Disneyland. Um, Disney World, definitely Splash Mountain. Love the log flume, love the version at Disney World. Um, and let <sighs> It's, it's almost, it's almost like so hard to choose a favorite attraction at Disneyland because there are some like, like at Disneyland that I love, like Pirates of the Caribbean is amazing at Disneyland. Um, but in terms of maybe my favorite ride, I and mean, I'm going to specify ride and not attraction, is Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. I say, I don't say attraction because the attraction part is not like, I'm not into Marvel or Guardians of the Galaxy, but I love the ride. Like, I love Tower of Terror at Disney World, but Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout is so much fun. You're literally just levitating. Ah, I love it so much. Like, that might have to be my favorite, you know, ride experience there at Disneyland. But as an overall attraction too, I could talk about this for so long. Um, Indiana Jones at Disneyland, ah. God, that's so cool. Um, but you gotta sit in one of the end seats so that you get more of like the tilt because that's so much more fun than if you're in a middle seat, you get less tilt on the ends. That's so fun. And I love Indiana Jones. That was a big thing I grew up watching. So it's fun to see that in, in real life. Um, what am I doing at the moment with my cake ears? Um, these are getting their, their cake coloring to this. So these are becoming painted with birthday cake so they're not just vibrant yellow. And then these will get frosting on them and then these also get sprinkles on the edges. <laughs> People doing live streams for over six hours. I feel like I'd need more practice doing that. Like I can already feel like my voice getting hoarse, which would happen, um, I, um, for a while had to do TA live streams. So for, as a teaching assistant, I would do online, basically like live streams, w walking people through the lab, but nobody had to tune in live because you could just watch the recordings. So most of the time I would just be talking to myself and I could tell like by the time it hit like the 45 minute mark, I'm like, 
<sighs> I'm getting a little hoarse, but at least I have, I have that kind of practice and talking to myself. But at least that was, that was talking to myself. This is, there's actually, I guess, people listening, which is nice. It's working through. And so obviously, although this is in real time, this is definitely slower than it would be if I wasn't doing this, you know, to try and like stop and, and read things, but this is at least the, you know, the essence showing, showing the cakes getting made. So let's see. <laughs> yeah, actually I'm good. Um, I pr I'll probably keep going for like 15 more minutes um, yeah, I'll keep going until 3.30 this time, also because I have a dual birthday Zoom after this, my dad and my uncle, so kind of reset for that, so we'll do 15 more minutes, let's say, until 3.30. Okay. Ooh, good question. Sedimentary, igneous, or metamorphic? <laughs> um, so I love sedimentary rocks. Um, I did not always think I was like, um, if you like sedimentary rocks, that means like you're a, a soft rock geologist because sedimentary rocks are composed of bits of other rocks. But I love the research that you can do with them that, you know, you can date each single grain and find out where something was like coming from. Basically, I love the stories that they tell. Um, also because I like the processes at Earth's surface, like what's, you know, what goes on at the surface. I don't like, um, I'm not as interested in magma or like stuff below the surface, the petrology stuff that I don't like as much. Um, so sedimentary rocks are not, are definitely not the most um, aesthetically interesting rocks, but I love the kind of like the stories that they tell because they're composed of all these little bits and, you know, the di dynamic Earth's surface. Oh, some more people crafting together. Um, no, my dad's birthday was yesterday and my uncle's birthday is today. Um, they are not blood related, <laughs> um, but they'll be happy. They'll be happy to know the birthday greetings. Um, I miss the beginning. What do you want these to look like when they're finished? Let me just pop out of frame for a second. These are what they're going to look like. Um, so this is my very first prototype. This has like a million layers of paint because I couldn't get the color right. And there's going to be more frosting on there, but got the sprinkles, so the lighting's kind of bad, but uh, let's go back. Um, how is, how is my cat? Um, both our kitties are excellent. Um, Micah is sleeping on her bed as she does almost all day. <laughs> like it's, it's our guest bed, but it's her bed. Um, and she's great. And Celix, our other cat, is a daddy's boy, so he's with his daddy. Um, do you think the rocks in Vegas would be interesting? Um, I think I really like all of the rocks in the geology in the southwest, um, the Basin and Range province. Um, I kind of a really cool, because we get mountains in the Basin and Range, not from, um, you know, plates colliding and pushing up, but from extension. Um, so... Vegas has also some really pretty rocks. Um, would I ever incorporate more Spanish in my videos? I'm not sure, um, just because I don't know how much of my audience is Spanish speaking, um, but it would kind of be cool to, to find a way to do that. Um, Ever considered streaming on Twitch? Uh, no, it took me probably, it even took me a while to work up just to do this, um, just because I am a very introverted person and shy, um, and like doing 
my videos, I can record as many takes as I need be, because I'll, I'll like stumble over my words, I'll say the same thing a million times. But I was like, you know, let's just, let's just do this. Um, this is, but it's actually turned out pretty good. Um, and it actually works out that I can, you know, work on ears and then still kind of have a video. Do I like musicals? Yes. Um, my dad uh, is a theater director. He's, um, he directed high school theater for years and does community theater now. I love musicals. I've seen so many. Uh, my dad is dying <laughs> to get to like New York and have Broadway reopen and like see shows again. Um, so I have seen so many musicals, which I'm, I'm really lucky in that regard that I have a love for that too. Um, if I had to choose one, maybe like top favorite musical, um, a little bit more niche, but Parade by Jason Robert Brown. That might, that, might, that might have to be near the top. Um, I do not play Animal Crossing. It's the type of, those type of games. For some reason, have never, have never interested me. I've always been more into like the physical, you know, doing a, a craft, making something as opposed to that, but. Oh, um, do you think you'll get the new Halo Taco Pastel collection? Already have uh, the lights on the other side, but this is lavender syrup from the new collection. I didn't get the whole set because I know I wouldn't use some of the shades, um, but I got a few of them. They are gorgeous. Highly recommend. Um, so these are these are the cake ears. Gonna become this. How many hours a day do I work on ears? Um, on the weekends, I pretty much have to work like a regular work day on ears. Um, so basically, gen I think generally like Saturday and Sunday, I will put in like around eight hours each on ears. And then just because I, I try and take on as many orders as I can most nights like after I do my grad school you know dissertation work I do have to work on ears so I'll work on ears maybe from 6 30 to 9 at night or from like 7 to 9 at night um so it's it's quite a lot and there there are days when it's just like I I just don't want to work on ears I just like want to sit and relax but then it'll get to a point where like your orders need to be shipped out within four days. And then I'm like, okay, like then work like nonstop, package nonstop. Um, but I mean, that, it's also, it's my own doing for how much I offer. Let's see. Keep going for like 10 more minutes. No, oh, another Jason Rapper Brown fan. Um, are you going to do more live streams? I think I definitely can, especially just because of the fact of like, it's been getting more difficult to have time to like film a video and then edit it and then upload it. Um, because YouTube gets like very angry if you have like a schedule and then you start posting less. Like I can tell, um, especially like when I got really sick last year and went from posting like two times a week to at most once a week, like my old catalog of videos was recommended less. It was getting more views, you know, from my, my backlog of ones. So like it's, that's the thing with YouTube. It's like, you're, al you're always pressured to like have a video out. Um, but this is, this is a kind of like a easy, good way to do that. Um, so I can, I can work on ears, I can get this done, um, but do a video. Um, so the cake part of these ears, these are a type of a sponge. Sponge there. And I am out of my cake paint. So I will have to mix up some more at some point um, to be able to finish that. But as long as I still have some paint 
for my Neapolitans. Might as well use up this paint and then, because I know I have to get more of the paint, mix it up later. We'll take care of that in a bit, but briefly switch to finish up these, or finish up the pink part of these. It's hard to see pink. Um, do I ever have anyone help me make the ears? No. I do everything myself. <laughs> I'll like jokingly ask my boyfriend like, hey, want to help me cut out headband fabric? He's like, eh, no. Um, so everything is done by myself. Um, and I wouldn't be able to do it any other way because I wouldn't be able to make enough profit to like pay somebody to help out. Um, so it's just me, myself, and I here. Ears. All day. But I really enjoy it. How old am I? Um, I am 28. Um, every time like I go somewhere like the dentist, they're like, like, oh, you have like the fountain of youth or like TSA will ask my age to make sure I'm not an unaccompanied minor. Um, so I am well aware that I look younger, for my, younger than my age, but I am 28. Um, how do I keep up with everything to keep ears um, for all ear orders? Um, Part of it is just kind of like the system that I've developed over time. I have my handy little notebook, which this, I can actually show my breakdown. I write all my orders in here. Like somebody has ordered birthday cake with no teeth, We've got rice crispy with a pink bow and teeth. And then I do a breakdown of like, okay, I have this many of these types of ears and then I have this many of these headbands to make. So I kind of get, you know, my carts set up. And then as I go along and finish things off, I will cross it out. So that's, that's kind of the organization system that I use. Um, I am still fully working from home for my PhD. Um, it, so, it's been now a long time that we've been doing work from home. Um, there are some people, I have been on campus quite a bit because I had to finish up some lab work, but now that I'm just writing, um, oftentimes people, in, in normal times, people who are just writing will kind of either, you know, work from home and write or, you know, come in occasionally. So even in normal times, I probably would just be, you know, working from home and just writing and finishing things up. but. Campus itself is actually, you know, decently normal in a sense. I mean, there's, ASU is a huge campus, so there's a lot less students here than normally. Um, but I know for the fall, they're like anticipating full back on campus in person. Um, do I watch Jenny Nicholson? Yes, I love her videos like Jenny's videos, like, like you watch them and it's like, how long did it take to make that? Like, I love her theme park stuff, but then even like that, that Vampire Diaries video, like I watched the whole thing and I, I know nothing about the Vampire Diaries. Yeah, she makes awesome videos. Um, how long did it take for your business to take off? Um, it definitely took a while, but also I did not promote my business as much because, you know, I was doing my YouTube videos and then I was just kind of so busy with grad school that I like wasn't as actively promoting it. But then when I, you know, had more designs to make and I'm like, you know, I, I was having like lots of fun with it, then, um, you know, I wanted to focus on it more. Um, and it's something that can definitely take a while. Um, so I, I'm trying to think. It was probably 2019 
when things kicked up a bit more. Um, so I have some video series on my channel of like talking about my Etsy shop that I got um, kind of traction from. And then also, um, if people know of Disney Hungry on Instagram, Jenny, um, she's actually local here um, in the area. And somebody had shared my beignet ears with her that at the time were new. Um, and so she actually um, got a pair and shared them. And there was a good number of people that followed from that. Um, so it's something that's like, you know, taken, it's taken a while, but also in a way because I wasn't super actively promoting the shop. Still selling the churro land ears? Yes, of course. I have all of my ears available every opening. <laughs> uh, th that's cool to get, get Jenny vibes. Sh she's cool. Um, for icing, um, I needed to maximize, um, or not maximize, but make these as kind of lightweight as possible. So they get a first um, lightweight spackle, kind of filling in everything to keep it light. Um, but then to like really, you know, weatherproof them and make them more durable, then they get an actual like, you know, top coat of, um, what is it called? Silicone caulk. <laughs> Silicone caulk, that's it. Um, am I almost done with school? Yes, I am writing the very final chapter of my dissertation and I will be graduating this summer, which will be good. I'll finally be done with all of school for forever. <laughs> Oh yes, thank you for tuning in. Um, my dissertation is um, based on understanding the um, environmental and geologic context of human evolution in East Africa. Um, so I kind of look at the landscape and see what was going on in the landscape um, at like times and you know key intervals in early hominin evolution. So that's that's kind of the gist. Okay, well, we have reached 3.30, my time here, so that's been 90 minutes. Um, so I'll probably tune this off, or not tune it off, turn it off for now. Um, made it a decent way, pretty good way through the cakes. We'll get, still have a rainbow cake to get through too, but overall good progress. Thank you for joining, like thank you, so that it wasn't just sitting here by myself. I was like, well, you know, I can just like sit, sit in silence and just, just work. But thank you for the questions <laughs> and, and the good time. Um, if people did enjoy this, you know, let me know. And then I can try and do this a little bit more regularly because I'm always here making ears. <laughs> but bye guys. Thank you.